Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman and I love cars. I'm going to tell you my story of the third gen Camaro. This story is going to concentrate on the Z28 and the IROC. I have many stories about the third gen Camaros as many of my friends either have or had one over the years. I decided to choose a story that didn't incriminate anyone, unsanctioned speed contest in Mexico and the like. When I was 11, I was obsessed with IndyCar racing. I was over the moon when Indy announced that they were going to hold a race in Toronto. I harassed my poor father relentlessly until he conceded to take my best friend and I. My poor father didn't love cars or racing. We had terrible general admission seats on the straightaway. It was miserably hot and the Indy cars went so fast down the straight you couldn't even make out which car was which. We didn't even know who won until we got home. My friend David and my father were sunburnt, dehydrated, and pretty cranky by the end of the Indy race, but I convinced them to stay for the Players' Challenge race. The Players' Challenge was a racing series for identically prepared Camaros and Trans Ams. In 1986, the cars had 305 L69 HO engines. On the advice of a random spectator, we sat in the grass on one of the corners. The race was amazing door-to-door -door action. My father and David were both glad I made them stay. I never attended or watched another indie race, but I never missed a single player's challenge race on TV. My friend Dan and I had a job as runners at the local auto auction. Once a month, we skipped school to work at the auction. Our job was to run the sales sheets up to the girls in the office so they could enter all the sales into the computer. Dan's mom had a data entry job. She was her ride and she had to be there an hour before we did. Dan and I used this time to check out all the auction cars. I often brought a mixtape to test drive the car stereos, as we were obsessed with car audio at the time. Dan and I were shocked when we saw a row of 30 IROC Camaros. Our boss ran up all excited knowing we were obsessed car geeks just like him. Our boss talking. These are special cars. Do you know what these are? We did know. We both yelled out in stereo. These are X-Players Challenge cars. Our boss seemed bummed that we already knew what they were. The roll cages and stickers had been removed, but you could see where the decals had been and evidence of where the roll cages had been. 46-year-old me assumes these cars were leased to the racers and they'd come off lease and were brought to our auction house. 14-year-old Dan and I didn't ask where they came from. We were 14 years old and we were just excited to be in their presence. For us, it was just like meeting 30 movie stars all in one day. Hello, I am a super cool Chevrolet Camaro Z28 Transformer. Please like. Comment and subscribe to Jason Bowman Loves Cars, or I will be forced to destroy you. Jerry Palmer penned the design for the 1982 Camaro. The new Camaro had a lot of design firsts. Advances in auto glass design led to the Camaro's large and complex rear window. The sleek 62-degree windshield recline broke GM internal rules limiting windshield angles to 60 degrees. The general consensus at the time in Detroit was performance was dead. Many people thought the Camaro should be front-wheel drive. Thankfully, chief engineer of the Camaro project, Tom Zimmer and Fred, <laughs> development team leader, had other plans. They wanted the Camaro to be the ultimate rear-wheel drive handling machine. The Camaro retained its live axle, but the second gen's old leaf springs were binned in, in the bin. favor of coil springs out back. Up front, the second gen Camaro's double control arms were binned in, in the bin favor of a more modern arrangement with a strut and spring combo. The third gen Camaro also went on a major diet losing 470 pounds. The new suspension design and weight savings paid off with 0.83G on the skid pad. Motor Trend Magazine praised the third gen's handling dynamics to be among the best available bar none. The Camaro became Motor Trend Magazine's car of the year for 1982. The Camaro was also chosen to be the Indy 500 pace car. 6,000 pace car replicas were sold. The Z28 package included aluminum 15 by 7 inch wheels, a SMC sheet molded compound hood, a four piece factory body kit, and rear deck lid spoiler. The third generation Camaro was released for sale in December 1981, beginning production on October 12, 1981. The Camaro commercials I found were pure 80s gold. Listen to the heartbeat. Feel the thunder. Put yourself in today's Chevrolet Camaro IROC Z and listen to your heartbeat. The heartbeat of America. Damn Chevrolet. Third gen Camaros were a staple in my favorite period B car movies.
A total of 1,528,921 third-gen Camaros left dealer showrooms between 1982 and 1992. Specifications by year. 1982 V8 engine choices included the 5-liter 305 LG4 V8 4-barrel 145 horsepower or a 5-liter 305 LU5 twin TBI Crossfire Injection 165 horsepower. The Crossfire was only available with an automatic transmission. 1983 an optional 5-liter L69 4-barrel 190 horsepower high output HO engine became available. The new engine was paired with a quicker 3.73 axle ratio and either a 5-speed manual transmission or the 4-speed 700 R4 automatic. 1984 hydraulic clutches were introduced for the manual transmission cars. 1985 the IROC Camaro was introduced. IROC stands for International Race of Champions. IROC was like an American Motorsports all-star game where all the big-name drivers raced identically prepared stock cars set up by a single team of mechanics in an effort to make the race purely a test of driver skill. Chevrolet built street-legal tributes of the IROC race cars. The Camaro IROC streetcars featured new rounded front bumper, rear bumper, and side skirts. IROCs also featured new 16 by 8 inch aluminum wheels with P24550 ZR16 Z rated Goodyear Gatorback tires and newly sport tuned suspensions. A stronger Borg Warner 9 bolt rear end unit was also introduced. V8 engine options LB9 305 cubic inch 5 liter tune port injected 215 horsepower. The LG4 was a 4 barrel carbureted 305 with 155 horsepower. The L69 was a 4 barrel carbureted high output 305. It was rated at 190 horsepower with 240 foot pounds of torque at 3200 RPM. 1986, the government mandated third brake lights. GM mounted them to the hatch class. 1987, the big news was the availability of the L98 350 TBI. The third brake light was integrated into the rear spoiler. ASC, American Sunroof Corporation, had been converting third gen Camaros into convertibles since. But 1987 marked the first year of GM approved conversions. The V8s were upgraded with roller lifters and improved ceiling center bolt style valve covers. The IROC Z and the Z28 top speed on the speedometer was increased to 145 miles per hour. In 1988, Camaro line was simplified down to two models, the Z28 with the IROC Z package and the base model. The base 5 liter 305 cubic inch V8 gained throttle body injection. This brought the horsepower up to 170. The 305 tune port injected manual transmission models were rated at 220 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 290 foot pounds of torque at 3200 RPM. Automatic cars were rated at 195 horsepower at 4000 RPM and 290 foot pounds of torque at 2800 RPM. And the 350 cubic inch TPI got a small increase to 230 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 330 foot pounds of torque at 3200 RPM. The IROC said got some small cosmetic changes. The Z28 logos on the side skirts and on the rear bumper changed to read IROC Z. The large IROC Z decals on the door moved from the front of the doors to the back to space out the logos. Dash badges on the IROC still red Z28 on the top and IROC Z below. The optional 16 inch wheels changed slightly. 1989 marked the return of the RS model. The Rally Sport was now the base model, featuring a similar body kit to the IROC Z and previous Z28, but with the 2.8 liter V6 standard and 305 optional. The LB9 305 got a boost to 230 horsepower and the 350 got a boost to 240 horsepower when they were optioned with the N10 dual catalytic converters. The highest performance IROC Z in 1989 was accidentally a well-kept secret. Most dealers were not aware of the option package. Only 111 cars were optioned this way. When the G92 performance axle was ordered with no air conditioning, C41, RPO code 1LE was automatically triggered. This included extra equipment intended to make the IROC-C more competitive in SCCA showroom stock road racing events. Larger 11.65 inch rotors with two piston aluminum calipers from PBR, an aluminum dry shaft, a special baffled fuel tank, specific shock absorbers, and stiffer suspension. Suspension and stiffer suspension bushings. The fog lamps were also deleted. 1990 marked the final year of IROC Z. Chevrolet did not renew its contract with the International Race of Champions. 1990 was also the first year of the airbag. A new half-moon gauge cluster complemented the new airbag. Sharp edges on the dash surfaces were rounded and the lettering on the gauges switched from yellow to white. 62 Camaros were built with the 1LE equipment in 1990 with the same ordering process. Power for the IROC Z 5.7 was up slightly to 245 horsepower at 4400 RPM. Torque rose to 345 at 3200 RPM. 1991, the IROC was no longer available. All Camaros got a new skirt package. 
The Z28 also featured a high-rise spoiler and non-functional hood blisters. The third brake light moved to the inside of the rear hatch glass. The convertibles still retain the spoiler-mounted third brake light. The 1991 Z28 also received new wheels. The B4C special service option was made available to law enforcement, the government, and the military agencies. The B4C was an RS with Z28 powertrain and suspension. Just under 600 B4C Camaros were sold for 1991. The 1LE production increased to 478 units. 1992 is the final year of the third generation Camaro, a heritage package. Option RPO Z03 included a graphics package with rally stripes and badges. All 1992 Camaros received a 25th anniversary badge on the dashboard. The 1992 B4C Special Service Package got the addition of 1LE brakes. A total of 589 B4Cs were sold. 116 non-police package 1LE cars were produced. 1992 is the last year of production of the Camaro at the assembly plant in Van Nuys, California. The last third generation Camaro produced was a red Z28 coupe on August 27, 1992. Stock performance. MotorWeek tested a 1982 Camaro and it turned 16.22 at 79 miles per hour in the quarter mile. The Camaro got more powerful and quicker as time went on. As usual, 0to60times.com had the whole spread. <laughs> aftermarket performance. The performance aftermarket for the small block Chevy is limitless. Cylinder heads, intake manifolds, camshafts, stroker kits galore. The third gen specific parts are also readily available. Headers, cap back exhaust systems can all be found. Suspension upgrades are also plentiful from wild to mild. Engine swaps are commonplace. LS and big block Chevy swaps being the most common. Wow, that Camaro took that Mustang to Gapplebee's racing. Drag racing is a given, but third gens also make great autocrossers. Oh, dude, you don't, don't hold your ears. You need to listen to that. That's America right there. That's how you guys are hearing is a decent. Third gens make great road racers. Camaros make great drift cars. Camaros do make great race cars, but they are most at home on twisty, majestic canyon roads. Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Run. Buying a third gen Camaro. There are several things to look out for on these cars. The Tin Worm loves these cars. Many of these cars have T tops, and T tops always leak. Check for rust along the T bar. The water that leaks into these cars collects in the floor pans. It is not uncommon to find rusted out floors. The windshield cowls have debris screens that are prone to cracking and deforming. If these screens fail, debris fills up the cowl and rusts it out. The lids on the master cylinders are prone to leaks. Leaking brake fluid commonly eats the paint off the shock tap. Once the paint is gone, the strut tower begin to rust. In fuel injected cars, replacing the fuel pump is a fiasco. The rear axle must be removed to drop the fuel tank and replace the fuel pump properly. Red-green types have found a half-assed way of doing this, by cutting an access hole in the trunk floor. When looking at a prospective car, check for this common butcher job. The trunk floor is structural, and the access hole can damage the structure. Check that all the panel gaps are uniform. Bad cam- bad camel gaps. 
<laughs> Bad panel gaps between the front of the doors and the back of the fenders can be evidence of a collision damage or a twisted unibody. It is common for the rear hatch not to line up with the back of the car. If the glass is bonded to the hatch and the lift supports tend to push the metal back over time. Misaligned and or rusted out hatches are common but not overly expensive to replace. Small block Chevy engines are not expensive engines to replace or repair, but here are a few tips. Worn valve guides and leaking valve seals are common, so check for blue smoke upon acceleration. The coolant overflow bottle is close to the hot engine and they are prone to cracking and leaking, causing overheating problems. The third gen Camaro is a bottom breather. This air dam directs air into the rad. Make sure it is still there and in good condition. Camaros sit low to the ground and this air dam often gets smashed off on parking curbs and speed bumps. The interior of these cars tend to get heat damaged often as there is a lot of glass for the sun to shine into. The seat frames are known to break so check for this. The seat bolsters on sports cars tend to wear but more so on the third gen as you sit so low on them. Hegarty claims the average value of a 1982 Camaro Z28 to be $13,000. A quick look on Facebook Marketplace suggested these cars are still very plentiful and inexpensive. Like all 80s and 90s cars, the prices are on the rise so the time to buy is now. These cars will likely double in value in the next 10 years if the second generation Camaros are any indication. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the third gen Camaro. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment.